hope you guys are ready for a blast from the past. This article I'm showing is from one year before Zen 1 launch. It's a comprehensive breakdown by WCCF Tech about how Zen truly is poised to take on Intel in every market, in every category. Performance, efficiency, and not just a performance in multi-threaded, but performance in gaming. John Taylor, corporate vice president, said, For the first time since I've been at AMD, I can say with absolute confidence that AMD is the products and strategies to change any negative perceptions customers may have. And frankly, one of the reasons I'm showing this is just to dwell a little bit on how funny these comments have an age from fanboys. In fact, I noticed there are a ton of comments where the replies show that they were clearly negative towards AMD that have been deleted, and that's because these negative AMD comments from the past really haven't aged well. Today, the comments are basically the opposite of what you saw four years ago, overwhelmingly positive towards AMD. Actually, to the point where I see a lot of people asking why AMD hasn't rolled out entire Intel destroying lineups in all markets yet. Like, where is giant APUs and laptop, and why did something like Renoir take so long to come out? And that's really what this video is going to be about, explaining... AMD's long-term strategy since the inception of Zen. The first thing I got to bring up right out of the gate, and it's something I've emphasized many times in the past, is AMD has only so many resources. They're about a tenth as big as Intel. They were just literally not capable of rolling out multiple product launches at the same time without a tremendous amount of preparation, right? When you design a chip and launch it, it's not just about the time it takes for the engineers to do the actual work designing it. It takes a massive supply chain to actually roll out the products effectively. It's not just the designing costs. It's actually everything behind it that makes the product launch effectively. And that's something Intel just has a massive leg up. Now, this is, this is slowly changing, but any misstep made by AMD in the past could have spelled... Well, bankruptcy. And this brings us to part number two. It behooves AMD for Intel to not feel overwhelmingly threatened right away. And that's because Intel, again, especially a few years ago, had way more power to compete than I think most people realize. Yes, in my opinion, AMD's first generation Zen 1 epics were overall better than Intel's Xeon lineup. But people forget that these cost nothing for Intel to make, and they can ratchet up efficiency with better bending and lower prices quite a bit from where they were back in 2017. And that's exactly what they did in laptops, on desktop, and with their Xeon lineup. So really, AMD was competitive again, but if they pressed the advantage, Intel wasn't that far behind. How do you eat an elephant? Well, one bite at a time. AMD thought long and hard and put together a strategy of surgically striking markets Intel had overlooked. First was high-performance desktop, ending the era of gamers worrying about if they should spend triple the money for double the cores. And at the same time, and rolling out harder afterwards, was Epic, focusing on offering especially excellent embedded options. After that, AMD rolled out the rest of what was required to take the desktop market, and now they are finally marching into mobile while pressing the advantage harder in server. And AMD really is starting to press their advantage now. And you can tell because despite Zen 2 desktop processors just sweeping Amazon's bestseller list, the prices keep coming down, showing that as AMD keeps up with demand, they want to make sure they take as much market share with competitive pricing as they can right now while Intel is behind in performance. Well, AMD has gained a lot of market share in the past few years, it's still a drop in the bucket. This point was really hit home hard in a recent Broken Silicon, episode 39, where I talked to a market analyst about the market share difference. You see, AMD sells about 40 million units a year versus Intel's 400 million. And when you're selling that much, when you have that much of an industrial advantage over AMD, it's basically just a fire hose where as long as Intel can move the product at cost, well, they're pretty much happy and they can crowd AMD out if a price war is triggered. They're not industrially competitive at 50 million units a year. 
I'm estimating in the cloud market, for example, Intel's probably selling 28 core scalable processors for 400 bucks a piece, 85% off 1K price. And these people need to keep their businesses running. AMD doesn't have enough volume to supply them. And Intel doesn't want to lose that market either. Those eight core i7s and i9s cost Intel about 35 bucks to make. And so, well, yes, AMD can easily afford to sell a 1600 for 80 bucks. It still could end up competing with an i9 if AMD triggered the price war. Additionally, Intel is making those 28 core Xeons for about 200 bucks, and Rome is estimated to cost about $400. Again, listen to that episode for the details. You picking up what I'm throwing down? If AMD would have tried to really trigger a price war, really go for all the market share with Gen 1 Epic, they couldn't have made enough to take the market share anyways. And additionally, Intel has way more room to lower the Xeons to better price performance if Epic is only 30-50% better. Now, things are starting to change, though. Rome, I would say, is over twice as good as those 28-core Xeons. And so, even though it's double the price, they could almost compete in a price war if they had enough capacity, which AMD is working really hard on, and things should continue to change in AMD's favor near the end of this year. If AMD can get Zen 3 out in server, which I'll get up to that if later, if they can, I do think it's going to be a bigger increase in their server chip performance um, over Rome than Ice Lake server will be over what Intel has right now. So if AMD can get their server chips to be, you know, maybe cost twice as much to make, but be maybe 2.5 times better than even their Ice Lake server chips, that's when AMD can really start considering a price war. And until then, AMD's gonna just have to try to cling little bits of market share here and there so they can hopefully get to around, oh, I don't know, 80 million units a year versus Intel selling 300. That's a tall order though. That would be kind of a best case scenario if AMD could go from holding around 10% of the overall PC market to around a fourth of the overall PC market. Right now, they hold about 15% of laptop, 5% of server, and 18% of desktop. I think they would have to try to get to 25% of laptop. And, and honestly, I think Renoir will be enough to make inroads, but I... <laughs> I also don't think Intel is going to give up any percentage point of laptop market share easily. I think AMD can get to 10% server, but I think right around when AMD starts getting to double digits, Intel will start selling their server chips almost at cost, dirt cheap like a fire hose, shooting them at their customers. And you're already starting to see this with the new lineup being drastically cheaper than the previous one from Intel. And when it comes to desktop, I think AMD might actually be able to get this. Maybe they can get to 50% desktop market share. But the point is, this isn't going to be easy. But if AMD were going to do it, how would they? Well, I guess I do have some updates to what AMD has coming down the pipeline as well. So let's get to what I've got from some sources. Do note that this isn't meant to be a comprehensive look at AMD's roadmap over the next two years. These are merely updates to leaks I've already put out. If you want to know what other things I've leaked, you'll have to watch my other videos and listen to my other podcasts. Anyways, supposedly new Threadripper products are still coming. Anyone remembers there were rumors of an eight-channel platform, and that's what AMD has coming with 16 cores. Yes, 16 core Threadrippers, 32 cores, and 64 cores. And these are meant to be not for the gamer renderer people, but for the people that need a lot of IO, PCIe lanes, and memory bandwidth. Additionally, 7 nanometer plus what I call Saison, although that's not the official name, is still on track. And specifically, some die space was sacrificed. It was made a bit bigger so that they could build it so it scales with more power and better cooling linearly that tells me this is really meant for more embedded or laptop products that will be docked again i think this is going to be some big surface product but there is a bigger apu coming as well that is not meant to be constrained by thermal or power amd's mega apus are coming Additionally, I do have an update for Zen 3, unfortunately. It's likely to miss a full 2020 launch. I saw several product roadmaps that did not show Zen 3 in 2020, although I did point out to my source 
that it wasn't showing all the professional products, meaning I think they may try to get out Zen 3 Epic at the very end of Zen 4, but they're going to probably delay everything else due to what's going on with the virus out there. However, I do think there will be select product launches for Zen 3 this year, and frankly, I don't think AMD really cares. Notice how I said they're launching a more powerful Threadripper that's based on Zen 2, but then they're delaying Zen 3. To me, this tells me they may start diverting Zen 2 Epic chips into Threadripper that are more efficient and have all eight memory channels while they start rolling out Zen 3 to the professional markets. And then, of course, Zen 4. This might use AVX 512. It's not necessarily confirmed that Zen 4 will, but AVX 512 is planned by 2022, and it won't be in Zen 3. And then, of course, Zen 4 right now is planned to have a 7 nanometer IO die. So, yeah, a lot of random updates I have for you guys, and the major point to me sharing this now is this. Every successive Zen launch has been more and more staggered, and I really do not see that changing with Zen 3. But I think consumers can take solace in the fact that if Zen 3 is more staggered and more relegated to specific markets at first, that's not going to stop AMD from bringing out more and more cool Zen 2 products and other Zen architecture products. AMD is a smorgasbord of Zen architectures right now that have specific cost advantages that can be applied to different markets. So again, if you see Zen 3 come out to the professional market and you're like, ah, why aren't these on desktop? Or you see a big Zen 3 APU come out out of nowhere for someone and you go, ah, oh, why can't I get this on desktop? It's like AMD will have something keeping them competitive in all markets right now. It just might not be all the same architectures. And when it comes to the same architectures, note that TSMC's family of 7 nanometer nodes, you have N7, N7P, N7 Plus, and N6, all allow for easy porting of architectures between them. So it wouldn't surprise me if we saw Zen 3 roll out on multiple nodes. I mean, heck, we already know from that Saison leak that Zen 2 will be on 7 nanometer EUV while it's already on 7 nanometer non-EUV. There's a lot of modularity and options AMD has. Just again, Note that they will be applying them to what's most competitive for them in the market right now, and you might see just a whole bunch of different types of architectures and nodes used within the next year. And overall, I just don't see a point in AMD putting Zen 3 on desktop quickly. They are overwhelmingly competitive already. Zen 2 is already better than Comet Lake, and Comet Lake might not even come out until the end of quarter two. Again, I've heard that it's been delayed, and I've reported that since my Whispers of Golden Cove video. So yeah, AMD's focus will be on server, and taking as much of that as possible will taking as much of laptop as possible at the same time. And then I think I guess this is where I'm getting to my summary. Into early 2021 is when you're finally going to see AMD rolling things back out into desktop. And that's kind of when they can do a price war. That's what I'm getting to. All of this is leading to what I believe will be a price war mid-2021. Because that's when AMD should just have about enough market share. Just have about enough capacity. And just have enough of a technology advantage to really, really push their luck. The goal, if I was AMD, would, it be get, would be if I want a price war to get it rolling out half a year before Golden Cove comes out and really just try to take as much market share as possible before the end of 2021. Because once Golden Cove comes out, once we have Alder Lake, I think you're going to see Intel start being much more competitive again. Maybe not as good, right? Maybe, maybe not as good as AMD Zen 3 or Zen 4, but not half as good. And over twice as good as what AMD needs to win a price war. So they're going to have to take as much as they can in that narrow window in about a year from now. But that's just going to about do it for this video. The point of this video truly was to explain what AMD's... Tra but that's going to just about do it for this video. The point of this video was to explain AMD's four to eight year strategy with Zen taking little parts of the market at a time until they can climb into a position where they can finally trigger the price war and take as much market share in that price war as they can before Intel swings back in 2020.
too. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I, if you did, I bet you noticed there were a lot of details I couldn't cover in incredible depth, and that is what Broken Silicon is about. Listen to those guest interviews, listen to the ep episodes with me and Dan where we go through the news and really expand on our thoughts from the videos we've made, and remember, if you like all of this, please subscribe, please share with your friends, ring the bell button, and support us on Patreon where you will get tons of extra exclusive podcasts and content like die shrink all right thank you